guys? It's Jay here from TV Time with Jay, and I'm back once again with another review for you guys. And this time I'm here to review The Good Doctor, Season 4, Episode 4, Nothing Changes. Uh, now, as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first to then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiled territory. You have been warned. Alright, so first things first, well, we found out in the promo for next week that next week is actually going to be the winter finale of The Good Doctor. So once again, one of my other big network shows is uh, going on a big hiatus pretty much until next year. So, um, dang, there goes my schedule. But uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Uh, we actually get to see in this episode both Claire and Sean take charge of their new first years. Um, of course, Park is with Claire as well. So, let's start with Claire. So, it's really interesting because Claire herself, you know, when she started at St. Bonaventure, she had a kind of, like, rival relationship with Morgan. And it seems like, you know, the two dudes that are in her care, Asher and I cannot remember the other guy's name. I will learn these names as, you know, we get to know them more. Uh, I only know two of the names of the newbies right now. Actually, three. I know both Sean's uh, residents are Olivia and Jordan because we spent a lot of time with them. I honestly wasn't paying as much attention to the Claire parts, so um, I'm probably going to end up skipping out on that. Now, if you guys want to talk more about it, definitely fill me in in the comments because I'm not going to lie. Um... I might have just not been paying attention to certain parts because I was honestly confused at what was going on with Park and Morgan there at the end. Maybe y'all can actually fill me in there. But basically, what happens is we've got this dude who we eventually find out has an aggressive form of cancer and both of the first years suggest different approaches and one of them Asher uh, being that he is more eager he's definitely more of the Morgan type of resident where he's like you know eager to prove himself to prove that he's smart and that he can handle this and that he's you know meant to be here uh, he suggests the more aggressive treatment and you know at first the other dude is like no 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 that's way too risky. He could die. Like, the risk of failure is way too high. We can't just do that. But after some consulting and some, you know, airing out some of their issues, they end up doing it. And thankfully, it ends up saving this man's life. And the lesson that kind of Claire imparts on her first years is that, you know, Maybe you do need to listen to other people's perspectives. It's okay to have other opinions. As long as you're able to hear the other side out and acknowledge when they're right. And also, you are really good at reading people and you were able to figure out that, you know, he went in with baggage. But maybe you need to figure out what you're carrying first before you, you know, start judging people. So that was pretty interesting. I liked seeing uh, insightful, like, more mentor-like Claire. Now, probably the more interesting part for me was seeing Sean in this more mentor-like role. And Sean, you know, with him being on the spectrum and with just how he operates, he's very much a, you know, one-method type of dude. If he's going to do something one way, he's going to keep doing it that one way. Uh, but what he realizes and what Andrews teaches him is that, like, you have to treat every person individually, like, when you are mentoring them. Because, you know, not everybody learns in the same way. With Olivia, she needed more help and more personal attention. With Jordan, Jordan just needed to know that Sean was there and was watching and uh, would be able to cover her if she ever messed up. So that was really interesting. And Sean also learns that, like, you know, you have to be held accountable for the actions of the people under your watch because, you know, you are the person in charge of them. So that's really interesting. 
Um, like I said before, I don't care about the Sean and Leah stuff. No offense to anybody who does, but I'm just going to skip over that because I don't really care. Uh, although I will say it was weird because, you know, they made a big issue about the whole uh, Leah moving back in thing. And then, you know, she made this. Uh, Sean was like, well, you're only moving in because you think it's inevitable, not because, you know, you think we have the right amount of commitment and trust. She goes, honestly, yeah. And then Sean was just like, okay, like, really? Really? We're not, we're not going to, like, dig further into that? We're just going to say okay? All right. I mean, it's up to y'all. It's your relationship. Again, I don't really care. <laughs> so it's whatever to me. But, yeah, so that's what happened with Sean and Leah. I think it's really interesting, especially, like, uh, when we find out more about Olivia, we actually find out that Olivia is Andrews' niece, and, you know, she's like, look, I have to learn to stand on my own, okay? Like, I appreciate your help, and I appreciate you telling Murphy that, you know, m maybe coming to me and helping me individually would give me the confidence to help, but I need to learn that I can make it on my own. So you need to just, like, let me do my own thing, make my own mistakes, which I think is really cool. It's very interesting. It kind of reminds me of, like, Sean's early days with Glassman and it's, it's interesting to see that Olivia and Sean have that kind of connection where um, you know they both are kind of neurotic and nervous types so they operate in different ways but Sean actually kind of understands her more than he does say a Jordan who is more of like sure of herself and confident but still needs to know that, you know she has somebody there to watch her back so that's pretty interesting. Um, other than that, there isn't really much to say. I was still very confused on the Park and Resnick stuff. It looks like Park is temporarily moving in with Morgan, uh, for some reason. And I, I know they've had a friendship since last season. Uh, they had, like, little bonding moments and, uh, like, they talk sports together and stuff like that. But, like, uh, I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on with them. So if anyone could fill me in in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. Overall, I thought this was a really, really good episode. I thought the whole ethical debate uh, with, like, you know, what should we do about the babies? You know, should we just let the strong baby survive and the weak baby die? Should we try and save the weak baby at the risk of the strong baby? Really, really interesting stuff. Of course, they ended up managing to find a middle ground where they were able to, uh, you know, let the strong baby you know, exit the womb uh, while still letting the weaker baby stay in utero to fully develop. I think that's really, really cool. Um, I myself was a twin. Oh, I mean, I am a twin. That's not a was. I am a twin. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons I have cerebral palsy is because I was underdeveloped. You know, I was uh, three months premature. So it's really interesting to see that now there are actual techniques to be able to keep a baby in utero to actually allow full development, which you know, in theory, could stop birth defects like cerebral palsy like that, which, you know, are usually brought upon by, you know, underdevelopment in utero. So that's really, really interesting. So I think that's that's cool. Like, that's something I was like, huh. It's a really interesting modern technique. Obviously, that didn't exist in the 90s. So, you know, I am where I am. But uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. I think it's really it's interesting to see just different medical techniques, right? Like, because it's just like the innovations that people make that can actually save and help kids in the future. I think that's really fucking cool. Uh, but yeah, overall, another solid episode. Um, again, just don't care about the Sean and Leah stuff. And I'm really, really interested in seeing the development of not only the newbies, the first years, but also the development of our core cast as the new mentor figures to these, you know, bright young doctors. So, uh, let me know all your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I review The Good Doctor every single week, and I will be reviewing it as soon as it comes back, you know, after this hiatus, after the winter finale next week. So definitely, if you like The Good Doctor and you want to see more of my thoughts on the season, definitely hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I also review a bunch of other great TV shows as well, so, uh, you know, if you like my thoughts on this show, you'll definitely want to hear me talk about other 
big shows that are out right now as well. So like I said, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. In the outro card, I will leave a link to my review of last week's episode of The Good Doctor, as well as a video YouTube mysterious algorithm that you might like, which I hope you do. But that's it from you guys. I've been Jay from TV Time with Jay. It's time for me to scrub out. And until next week, I'll catch you later in the Good Doctor Winter Finale. Peace.